Hi, this is John, and I just want to talk about something that you may have considered doing, and which seems kind of reasonable, but when you really put the numbers in, it really doesn't seem like it's very possible, which is probably why I've never heard of anybody actually doing this. And I just want to talk about why off-grid electric heating for RVs and vans probably isn't feasible right now. It, in the future, it might be if stuff like battery technology improves and things like that. But at least for now, it looks like, let's just say it's, it'd be, it's a big challenge. Let's just say that. Um, it'd be really expensive and so forth. Um, and um, so, and now by off-grid, what I mean is using batteries. Now, if you are hooked up to shore power or someplace where you have an electric hookup, then you could use an electric space heater on the AC and it'd be awesome. It'd probably be about, you know, it would heat it very well. And then even if you had to pay for it, that electricity, if you had it hooked up to you know, your house or whatever, and you were out in someone's back, that, it would still be cheaper than using propane, probably, just because because um, electric is pretty cheap. And that, the thing about it, too, is then you don't have to have all these windows open and stuff like you do when you have propane, which wastes so much heat. You know, that all that heat just goes right out your window using like one of those buddy heaters, which I'll talk about later. But anyway, so let's just um, get into this a little bit. So right now... Um, as we know, the king of off-grid mobile heating, RVs and vans and everything, is the buddy heater, some sort of buddy heater. This is the big buddy, but there's other ones as well. And they're, you know, they're, they're good. They have a catalytic um, deal on it. So that what that does is it makes it to where it doesn't, there's a very little chance that they're being carbon monoxide. And it's also a lower temperature than having an open flame. And they, they do a pretty well, good job of heating a small space. Um, but the, um, and they're used on almost every van dwelling channel I've seen, you know, it's almost always the buddy heater. So I mean, they've made a lot of money off of that, you know, so, and then, um, and they're relatively cheap to operate as well. The, um, you can get either the one pound cans or the, or probably what you want to get is a 20 pound. And it's pretty cheap. It'll last a fair amount of time. Propane's usually pretty cheap and everything. Propane and propane accessories. Okay. Had to throw that in for you guys, King of the Hill fans. And, um, they're also, yeah, like I said, easy to refill. You just go down to, um, there's like U-Haul stations, or you could use, you know, places to refill the cans, or you could do those exchange ones, usually like those Rhino ones at Walmart, and so it's, um, you know, which just takes you a few minutes, so it's very accessible as well. Maybe I should have put that on the list. And now the cons of the buddy heater, they use up the oxygen in the van. So, you know, us and fire, it's basically the same chemical reaction, whether it's our bodies or a fire, except for it's done a little bit more of a roundabout way in our bodies, and then and it, the fire, it, it causes a lot of heat and, also, and everything, and it also um, uses up the oxygen quicker. But So they use up the oxygen in the van, so that's kind of, that's not too good. And then they also produce lots of moisture, so you're going to have condensation everywhere um, on the windows, which isn't good, and getting mold and just all that kind of stuff. It just if you, And then if you have like a wet shirt in there, it's going to take forever to dry because it's so moist in there. Um, and then they produce carbon dioxide, which isn't, Carbon dioxide isn't lethal except in very large quantities. Maybe if you remember that movie Apollo 13, they had to find a way to get rid of the carbon dioxide because if it builds up enough, it can hurt you. And um, and occasionally CO2 or CO, carbon monoxide, which they use, it probably won't, but um, but it's always possible if they get in a low enough oxygen situation, they could theoretically produce a carbon monoxide, which isn't good. And they also require windows to, the really bad part is they require windows to be just pretty wide open. How far open, you can never really know for sure. There's not a scientific way. It's just kind of like, it's always, ah, just keep it kind of open. It's like, you know, it'd be nice to not have it open more than you have to. And then use, and then what happens is once you have those windows open too, it creates like a pretty good draft going through there and a pretty good circulation. And then, you know, you just lose all your heat going through the windows um, because of that. And then you, you also, oh, the other thing too, is you can't dial in the exact temperature. They don't have a, um, thermostat they have like a usually like a med a low medium and high setting which is how fat high it, how uh, much heat it's putting out um it goes by btus like i think it's like four thousand btus eight thousand or something like that and um but you can't it doesn't have a thermostat like your thermostat at home at a if you happen to have a house or you bit you know but um even if you live in a van you still know what it is so <laughs> so it's um yeah you can't set like an exact temperature like 69 degrees or something too so that's also bad about it now, so the question is, is it possible to replace this with this electric space heater? Now, that's an AC one that I have a picture of, so you'd have to use an inverter with that. Probably the best way would be is if you could find some kind of 12 volt one, then that would be more efficient, not have an inverter, but I just use that as an example. But, um, and so what are the advantages of a space heater, an electric space heater? They don't use up oxygen at all, so that's good. 
they don't they produce no gases and they require no additional open windows to um, so you're able to keep the heat in the van now of course you always need to have the window open slightly or maybe you just rely on the fact that there is some natural cracks in a sealed up thing because yeah you're you need a little bit of um, airflow to keep the oxygen just for you to breathe but it's nowhere near as much as how far open you're gonna have to have the window open to um, have that buddy heater going and they also have thermostats too so any kind of it most of these ones they don't have like an exact thing that says like 79 degrees or something like that or that'd be kind of higher 69 degrees but at least every just about every kind of electric heater has those some sort of thermostat on it, or at least it's pretty cheap to get one that does it's not like um i've seen some, there i think there is some small uh, portable propane heaters that have thermostats but they're very expensive and so and i think usually they have to be blue flame something with the technology so that which isn't as good the blue flame it's more dangerous and everything um and so why don't we use them in rvs and vans that's a simple thing you know um because batteries are lousy for storing heat okay they just don't store much energy and energy is the ability to do motion and, and, and whether it's the motion of the molecules, random vibrations like heat or to move things. So batteries are good as far as like, yeah, you need batteries to for a fan or a TV. You can't do that or a propane can. But as far as storing heat, they, they're really bad for that. Because let's just say, let's just compare a battery, batteries and propane. So here's a um, 100 amp hour battery, which is a pretty big battery, okay? And, and here's a one pound propane bottle, for example. Okay, so... Um, there's many different units that can be used for for energy, such as amp or not amp hours, um, like kilowatt hours and that sort of things. But joules is the most basic one, usually in physics. And then so, okay, so they can these can store they can store about um, four million three hundred and twenty thousand. Um, okay, four point about four point three million joules of heat energy. Okay, which sounds like a lot, but a joule is like a really small amount of energy. So, um, and just just for and also like just for your information. When someone says like a watt, that's a that's a measure of how many joules per second. So 100 watts is a 100 watt light bulb is using 100 joules per second of energy, and then and then a one pound propane bottle it stores about um, let's just say about 22 million joules of heat energy. And so like if we want to just come a scale the scale of energy, you got five it takes five of these um, big batteries which are super heavy to equal the heat energy in one of these propane canisters or propane bottles now the thing about it is more of that heat is actually going to stay it's going to be more efficient more of that heat produced from them is going to stay actually in your van because you don't have the windows open but even so i mean it's not like it's going to be like five times as much or anything like that so it's um it's still like yeah it's not very good at storing energy and then if you had like a 20 pound propane tank that would last you a long time but it, it actually gets a little worse than that because so that's the thing that kind of sucks is once you, you get this hundred amp hour battery oh yeah it's pretty good like oh no you can't just charge it more than 50 percent like oh really so i mean which whether you could argue whether that's true or not but then that means that really you're gonna need 10 of these batteries to um equal one of these propane bottles so okay so it's starting to look pretty bad here um okay so here's a case study with a pretty well a fairly well insulated minivan so i had this little minivan i was doing some experiments with and i was insulating and i guess i got it pretty insulated but i I can get it more insulated, but let's just say though, I mean, but a minivan is pretty small, right? And then just to kind of see like how much heat it would use and how hard it would be to use an electric heater. So, um, okay. So I did kind of a simple experiment and use this formula and, um, let me see if I, how, if I want to explain, what part I want to explain yet first. Um, okay. Let me go back a second. So basically I use this formula and this is, um, I guess it's called Newton's law of cooling in physics, but where basically you say that the heat loss from an object is equal to some constant times the temperature inside, the temperature difference, the temperature inside minus the temperature outside. And then, um, and so basically the way I did it is I just got like a 1500 watt um, space heater, or I don't know what it was. And I just had it at a set, a set. Um, so it's putting out a set amount of power, right? And then what I did is, and then, uh, after it had sat for a long time and the temperature wasn't changing, I measured the temperature inside and the temperature outside to come up with this K value, this constant, because I said it's a constant that depends on how good the insulation is. So the higher the um, insulation is, the lower the K. So we're looking for low K. And by the way, that, that's closely related to the idea of 
R value, except R value, it's actually the higher the number is, is the less heat. So it'd be like, um, anyway, so yeah, so you could do this. Um, so for example, okay, um, let's just make it like a cold day in California or what we call a heat wave where I live in Minnesota, where let's just say, so this is a pretty mild situation, 40 degree, uh, 30 degree difference. It's 40 degrees outside and I just want to get it to be 70 degrees inside, okay? Inside the van. Nice little picture of the van, huh? Okay, so after adding a lot of um, insulation and doing this formula, I came up with this value K of 30 watts per degree Fahrenheit. And by the way, this K does not change this for the most part. It's going to be the same pretty much no matter what. It just depends on how much insulation in the uh, and so forth and how big the van is for the most part you know like most things in physics it's um it's an approximation you know but it's but it works pretty it's a thing that works pretty well because i mean it's um yeah just like if you ever, ever took a physics class and they said oh something going down a frictionless plane or something like that it's kind of like that sort of thing okay so plugging in some numbers to the van example we say heat loss is equal to k times t in minus t out and then we say k and i came up with a value of 30 watts per degree fahrenheit and then, um, so I'd say that the heat loss for 30 degrees, so if I multiply the 30 degrees watts um, divided by degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, and by the way, in case you didn't know and you're not too familiar with physics or whatever, or any kind of science, that um, the units, you always put the units in the, to the formula and then the, the um, and then you can cross out the units and then you get like the, the, and then you know that for one way, you know that your equation is good and you're doing things right, or at least you have some idea that it's working out if you, the, um, units work out to what they should be. So I came up with 900 watts. Now, so that would be either a 900 watt continuously going space heater, or that could be just like an average. But anyway, so the idea is it would take 900 watts of electric heat to keep, to have a 30 degree difference um, Fahrenheit, to keep the van 30 degrees warmer than the outside. And, and just, just, you might be able to see just looking at it, if I wanted a 60 degree difference, it would actually be um, what it would be, um, 450 watts yeah 400 i know what i'm sorry no it'd be um, 1800 watts so if you so if you double the difference you'd, you'd be doubling the amount of um temp watts that you needed to keep it going so um okay and then and then let's just get some idea okay how how long if i had a 100 watt ba battery i mean not a 100 watt battery i'm sorry 100 amp hour 12 volt battery yeah we got to specify that it is 12 volts because if it's 24 volts it would actually at 10, 100 amp hours would be holding twice as much energy. But so, okay, so it's energy equals power times time or time equals energy divided by power. And so you got 900 watts from the heater down here. And then so, and then we're saying the energy in a ba in this battery is um, from before was this number here, this, you know, approximately 4.3 million joules. Um, and then what we come, you put this in here and then you put that in there, okay, 4,800 seconds. Okay, so we come with eight, 80 minutes, okay? You know, which is kind of crappy. So now you're gonna need like about like, you know, five or six of these to keep you warm during the night. Um, but it gets worse than that. Okay, well actually, I'll, let me get a little ahead of myself. So even a small minivan at a pretty mild temperature takes a big 100 amp hour, will only keep the temperature at a good temperature for about 80 minutes, right? But then it gets worse as most things, right? You didn't read the fine print, kind of like, hey, you know, oh, it's unlimited data, but you can only like um, look at Wikipedia, that sort of thing. Um, so you go to this next thing here. Oh yeah, we can only discharge the battery 50%. So it's really more like 40 minutes. <laughs> um, always some catch, catch 22. Um, so here's, but okay, so that doesn't sound very good. And you can see right now, this seems pretty hopeless, but there's a little bit of hope for the idea of off grid electric heat and so here's a few things to think about um if you were to su super insulate super seal up the, the numbers could improve i mean we're talking about you probably have to um you know have like two inches of foam all around and have it completely sealed up i mean just i mean and then have some way to have a little bit of a vent so you can get some air in there to breathe but um something like that but which actually it which actually i was thinking it would actually be possible probably to to maybe insulate and get a better value from something like a bigger van than what I have a cargo van just because um, there's only so much you can insulate that that minivan and then still have any room to like put a bed and stuff in there so um, okay so that's that's one thing so you, it is possible to insulate I mean theoretically I mean you could add enough insulation to like you know have a candle keep it warm but you know there's a certain you know limit to that you know you're walking you got this like 10 foot block of foam that you you live in or something like that you know uh, and then 
and then if um, I meant if not if but I'm not gonna change it because I'm too lazy right now so if um, you only needed to raise the temperature let's say 10 degrees instead your battery would last three times as longer so that's good and you could also do like some people have suggested maybe something like having some sort of just um, heating blanket or something like that and then you wouldn't you know you'd only be heating yourself not the whole thing and that would maybe be okay and then the other thing is using some sort of heat pump instead of a space heater would help I don't know if they really make like a small heat pump for um, an RV I mean I guess theoretically you could use like maybe well anyway let's not get into that but yeah the thing about a heat pump is it doesn't just um, cause heat from resistance from the battery from electric current it actually um, using um, expansion of gases in a pump basically what it does is it basically transports gas from one area to another it kind of sucks the heat out of the atmosphere outside of the van or RV and then brings it into the van pretty much is um the way you want to say it but in the it, it becomes more efficient the the warmer it is and so but you i think with those you can maybe sometimes get like you might be able to get your num numbers there and improve like double or sometimes triple with um depending on the temperature difference so that would also help but yeah so and the other and i guess the last thing is just hopefully future batteries will become stronger and cheaper so i'm not saying this is impossible that nobody's seen it work but i don't think i've seen anybody on youtube who's actually um done this yet which kind of you know I saw one where some guy was gonna try something like this he was um he built this really nice looking van um, you could tell he really was skilled at woodworking stuff but he was gonna try some kind of like heating in the floor but I think um I think I put some comment on his site that you know like yeah I kind of don't think based on this these sort of numbers that that would work but you know I didn't get any comments back but you know but anyway <laughs> so um all right so that's it for today so um yeah so I hope this I hope this helps and this at least gives you some idea like what you're against but I mean not but like you said um it is possible that it might be possible to do it if you really super insulate you just got to really figure out to have some really thick like styrofoam insulation throughout the thing so hope this helps this is John with Hidden Highways have a good day